I remember as a young child in the 1940s spending the summers on our family's farm. During the spray season, the workers would load their equipment with bags of pesticide and spend the long days working in the fields. Right beside the bags, they also stored their lunches and drinking water. On hot days, the workers would sometimes stand under the dripping trees to cool off. In the evening, they'd return from the fields covered with spray and not think anything about it. It was just a way of life. Back then, they didn't have the protective equipment, regulations, or education we have today because the effects pesticides have on humans weren't fully understood. Today, we would never think of allowing any of this to occur because we have much more information. This knowledge has led to the development of better equipment and more efficient methods of application for protecting ourselves from exposure. As a professional pesticide applicator, you work with very powerful chemicals that, if used properly, can protect our crops, timber, and wood structures from destructive pests. If pesticides are used improperly, they have the potential of causing severe health problems or even death. During a single workday, you have numerous chances of exposure while moving, mixing, or applying pesticides. You need to be fully aware of what you're facing so you can protect yourself, your coworkers, your clients, and your family. In this program, we're going to look at how and where exposure occurs, personal protective equipment, or PPE, and how to know what you need to wear, and proper methods of application that will greatly reduce your exposure level. To illustrate how and where pesticide exposure occurs, all of the applicators in this presentation will be spraying a mixture of water and fluorescing dye instead of pesticide. Areas exposed to the dye will glow when placed under ultraviolet light, graphically showing exactly where and what level of exposure has occurred. While preparing or applying pesticide, the possibility for exposure is constantly around you. Picking up and moving pesticide containers that may have been contaminated, carelessly opening a container, spills or splashback during mixing. All of these exposures can occur before you've even started spraying. Once you begin an application, some of the exposure risks you face are leaky equipment, spray drift, and brushing up against sprayed foliage. Not wearing the correct personal protective equipment will also increase your chance of exposure to pesticide. Every pesticide has a specific level of toxicity, and it's important that you're familiar with the particular properties of the chemical you'll be using. All pesticides sold and used in the United States are registered with the Environmental Protection Agency and required by federal law to have labels that provide precautionary information to protect human health. This labeling can periodically change, and it is your responsibility to stay up to date on the most current information. Before you work with any pesticide, it is extremely important and a requirement that you take the time to read the label and follow all of the instructions all of the time. If you ever have a question about the effects of a pesticide or the personal protective equipment that needs to be worn when using it, call the manufacturer's number listed on the package or your local cooperative extension service. Every pesticide product is required to have labels that define in specific terms the minimal level of personal protective equipment required to be worn by any person handling or using the product. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is apparel and devices worn to protect the body from contact with pesticide or pesticide residue, including coveralls, chemical resistant suits, gloves, footwear, aprons, headgear, protective eyewear, and respirators. PPE, as specified by each product, must be used at all times when working with pesticides, including moving, mixing, applying, or cleaning up. Depending on the level of toxicity or the methods of application, an applicator may only be required to wear as little protective clothing as long pants, a long-sleeved shirt, rubber gloves, and rubber boots. More toxic pesticides may require chemical-resistant clothing and respirators. By wearing the required PPE, you greatly reduce your chance of exposure and help to preserve your health. When wearing your PPE on hot days, you need to take the appropriate precautions to avoid heat stroke. During the mixing process, 
splashback and spills can occur, or powdered materials can become suspended in the air and be inhaled or come into direct contact with the applicator if they're not wearing the proper PPE. Here, we see the hands of an unprotected applicator under ultraviolet light before mixing. There is no contamination. During the mixing process, you can see there is some solution being spilled. Because he was not wearing protective gloves as required by the label, his hands were exposed. If this worker scratches his face or rubs his eyes, he will spread the pesticide, which could cause health problems. Always be careful with pesticides, but take extra precautions during the mixing stages because the chemicals are highly concentrated. When state inspectors are out in the field, they are amazed when they come across scenes like this, where applicators are spraying pesticide and not wearing any of the required PPE. Not only are the applicators getting pesticide on their skin, they're also getting it in their eyes and breathing it. This applicator should be wearing the PPE this applicator is wearing. When the protected applicator is exposed to ultraviolet light, it is evident how the protective clothing prevented the dye from getting onto his skin, and the respirator prevented him from breathing in the spray. The spray can be a very fine mist in the air, and at first may not seem like much to the unprotected applicator, but after a day of spraying, it's evident a lot of exposure has occurred. The applicator's hands, arms, and face have received high amounts of exposure from the spray mist in the air. Had he been wearing the required PPE, he could have substantially reduced his exposure level. This unprotected applicator is working in tight rows where he is constantly brushing up against the sprayed foliage. He is also using equipment that has not been maintained, and there's a steady stream leaking from the handle and running down his arm. Because of the faulty equipment and lack of protective clothing, he has an extremely high level of exposure after spraying only one tank. During an average day, he may spray 10 times that amount. Even though the protective clothing may be uncomfortable and time-consuming to put on and take off, it is required by law as a professional applicator that you wear it at all times and make sure your co-workers are wearing theirs. By building this discipline, you will reduce your level of exposure and help to preserve your health. Because this applicator wore the required level of protection, there was little, if any, exposure. Although all of this may sound obvious, too often we see applicators standing under dripping foliage while they're spraying, walking into their spray mist and applying too much spray, or tractor drivers that swing tight turns and drive back through the pesticide mist they've created. If you don't take preventative spraying measures, your protective wear can end up soaked with pesticide by the end of an application. If you don't maintain your safety equipment, there's a chance that the pesticide can seep through. This applicator had a small tear in his rain gear that allowed the dye to run down his back. Depending on the toxicity level of the pesticide, even a small amount like this over the long term could cause serious health problems. Even when you're wearing all of the PPE, you need to avoid any unnecessary exposure to pesticides. You can greatly reduce exposure levels by using simple methods like adjusting your equipment for correct pressures, spraying so that the wind moves the drift away from you, not spraying more pesticide than necessary, making wide turns with tractor sprayers to avoid driving back through the pesticide mist, proper adjustment of spray nozzles, standing away from tall trees to stay out of the drip line, and not working too close to other applicators. Besides the obvious direct exposure that occurs during actual mixing and application, there's also a possibility of secondary or indirect exposure that may occur after an application. Indirect exposure occurs when an unprotected person unknowingly comes into contact with a contaminated surface. Indirect exposure often occurs when applicators are entering or exiting contaminated tractor cabs and forget to wear the required PPE. While inside the cab, operators of type 1 cabs are not required to wear any PPE, while operators of type 2 cabs are only required to wear minimal PPE. However, when leaving the cab, the operator must remember that even though they were protected while inside the cab, 
the outside of the tractor is now covered with pesticides. To protect themselves, they're required to wear their PPE when exiting the cab. You must also remember that after a day in the field, this tractor would appear to be just dusty to any person walking by it. But under the ultraviolet light, we see that it is covered with the pesticide. If this tractor is not properly cleaned after use, any unprotected person who touches it could unknowingly become exposed. At first glance, this greenhouse looks very safe for people to work in without any personal protective equipment. But earlier, all of these plants were sprayed with pesticide. Once the pesticide solution is dry, it becomes invisible. If an unprotected person walks through or works in the greenhouse, they may brush against these plants and benches and unknowingly become exposed to the pesticide. Invisible chemicals that can easily be spread by touching a sprayed area and then rubbing your eyes, picking up a sandwich, or touching other surfaces. As an applicator, it is your responsibility to be aware of where the pesticide you spray ends up and to make sure you clearly mark any sprayed areas with warning signs to protect your co-workers and other people who may enter the area. Commercial and residential pest control operators, or PCOs, must be extremely aware of the secondary effects of the chemicals they use because they're constantly spraying in and around home and office environments where people live and work. If they're careless, pesticide residue can end up on the countertops. If the family uses the counter to prepare a meal without washing the surface, their food would become contaminated with the pesticide and could cause health problems. As a professional applicator, be aware of the potential hazards. Take the proper precautions, wear the correct PPE, and use proper application methods to minimize the level of direct and indirect exposure to you, your co-workers, your clients, and your family. While working with pesticides, all of your PPE and application equipment is going to be exposed to chemicals. You need to remember this when you're finished with an application. Before you remove your protective clothing, wash it down. Clean and check your respirator before storing it in a safe place away from pesticides. Take good care of your protective equipment because it is there to preserve your health. Remember, everything you wear while applying pesticide has a chance of being exposed to the chemicals. So when you wash your work clothes, wash and store them separately from any other clothes to avoid cross-contamination. Pesticides are used to effectively eliminate pests, so there's no question about their potential power. We've come a long way in understanding the methods of direct and indirect exposure to pesticides and how we can protect ourselves, our families, and our neighbors from them. As a professional applicator, you're responsible for the pesticides you spray, the pesticides that have so much potential for affecting so many people. The laws and regulations that have been passed can never protect you. You need to protect yourself and the people around you by following those laws, reading and obeying the safety information on the labels, and most importantly, using common sense. Take pride in your work and be a responsible applicator.